ready to rally. Independent supporters prepare to march this Saturday. Will it advance the cause or is the campaign flagging? And the SNP's push for independence was derailed last November when the UK Supreme Court ruled that Holyrood doesn't have the power to hold NDRF2 without Westminster's consent. Nine months on, the cause remains stalled, but the First Minister and fellow campaigners will be hoping to rebuild some momentum this Saturday when they gather in Edinburgh for a march and rally for an independent Scotland in the EU. Well, Mr Yousaf wasn't available for an interview this evening, but we spoke to his Minister for Independence, Jamie Hepburn, who will also be addressing the rally. Jamie Hepburn, what do you want this rally to achieve? Well, uh, the rally that's been held on Saturday is the uh, coming together of I Believe in Scotland with Yes for EU. So what we want to see is a, a vivid demonstration of the, the strength of the independence movement and also sending a very clear and strong and powerful message that we here uh, in Scotland believe that uh, Scotland should reconnect with the European Union and independent Scotland would, of course, rejoin the European Union. So we want to be out in uh, strength, out in number, demonstrating that to the, the wider populace. Critics would argue that events like this are merely preaching to the converted. Do they, do they ever actually change any undecided minds? Well, if, what it's about doing is bringing uh, together uh, people to show the strength of our uh, movement. You know, I, I'm out regularly, uh, every day, knocking on doors and speaking to people, engaging with them, answering their questions. Of course, that's the way you go out and you, you convert people and you speak to, to people that way. But, you know, there's something to be said. There's nothing wrong with people who believe in something coming together to demonstrate the strength of their cause. And that's what we'll be doing on Saturday. And following the judgment from the Supreme Court, do you accept that the independence cause is stuck at the moment? No, no I, I, you know, we are out. We're still making the case. Now, of course, the ruling... It was a disappointment. Uh, we were hoping that the, the ruling would be that the Scottish Parliament could go and legislate for a referendum. That wasn't the determination of the court. But let's remember, of course, effectively what that said is this requires a political solution. And the SNP uh, won the Scottish election in 2021 on the, the basis of seeking to hold a, a referendum on independence. The people of Scotland voted for it. We formed the government. So it's really over to the UK government. They but should accept that. They should recognise Scottish democracy and they should grant us a section 30 order so we can get on. You're legislating not, you're not close to a referendum though, are you? Realistically, there's no prospect of a referendum anytime soon. Well, look, we'll be going out, we'll be making the case. We need to build support and that's what we're uh, doing. I, I think there's only so long that any UK government can hold out against the, the will of the people of Scotland. You know, they voted for a, a referendum. They backed the SNP uh, at the last uh, Scottish Parliament uh, election. I'm confident they'll continue uh, to do that. And it's uh, up to the UK government. It's incumbent on any democratic government to listen to the voice of the people. But if the UK government repeatedly says no, as it has done, it's showing no signs of changing its stance on that. The, there is really little prospect of another vote on independence, is there? So how do you get oh, beyond that? Been, so there's going to be a, a general election next year and the First Minister's already uh, laid out we'll be using that electoral contest to, to continue to take forward the independence case. So uh, my uh, party's been going through a series of regional assemblies over the summer. Party members have been coming together to flesh out that proposition. We'll come together in October at our conference where we'll debate that matter uh, further. Then we'll go into the next UK election, again on the basis of seeking support from the people of Scotland. Just to be clear, that support, just, just to be clear, if we secure that can support, you then we will seek to engage with the UK government to try and put that into democratic effect. Very briefly, can you achieve independence without a second referendum, though? Our preferred option, of course, is to have a referendum. We've got a mandate for it. That should be granted. That's plan A. It always has been. We're now in a, a place, and you're right to say the UK government has been intransigent, and frankly, a lot of these questions should be for them rather than for me in terms of the process. We've laid out what should happen. They're the ones that are being uh, intransigent. But we will uh, contest the next election. We'll look to secure the support of the people of Scotland. And having secured that support, we'll engage with the UK government to try and put that into democratic effect. OK, Jamie Hepburn, thanks for your time on Scotland Tonight. With us now in the studio is the community editor and columnist with the National, Shona Craven. And in Edinburgh is the political commentator, Alan Roden, who's a former director of communications for Scottish Labour. Shona Craven, 
First of all, just how significant is this rally on Saturday, would you say? Well, what's quite interesting to note is that actually the planning for this started quite a long time ago. So when it was planned, um, that was still when there was potentially going to be a referendum in October. Um, so the idea would be that the campaign was really building and that the momentum was there. So it's a very different prospect now, of course, and it's more a case of trying to build up some momentum and get a campaign going again after a lot of um, difficulties, certainly for the SNP, albeit that hasn't necessarily dented support for independence so bringing together uh, lots of different people lots of different affiliated groups and obviously under the specific banner of an independent Scotland in the EU um, is, is seeking to um, you know regain that sense of purpose and kind of start campaigning again. And Alan Roden the First Minister will be speaking at this rally on Saturday is that smart politics on his part do you think? It's smart politics in terms of, of appealing to, to his base uh, you know the SNP membership would expect him to be there the recent went through a leadership election where he made promises that he would appear at these kind of events. It will appeal to, to the core independent supporters base. Where I think it might struggle is in terms of the wider independence cause. I don't think these kind of marches appeal to the to the large numbers of undecided or wavering voters in the middle. And that's who you've got to convince if you ever want to get independence uh, consistently above 50 percent. And Shona, what do you think the crowd will actually want to hear from Hamza Yusuf at the weekend? Well, I think they'll want to hear that there is going to be a very specific plan, obviously, for the general election, as Jamie Hepburn alluded to. Believe in Scotland, who have organised this with Yes for EU, they have set out a route map that, that they believe should be followed. The SNP obviously hasn't made its decision yet and won't until its conference. But they'll want to see some sign that there is a, a specific plan and strategy, because obviously there's been mandate after mandate, as you said, to Jamie Hepburn. So they will want to feel that there's a purpose to the campaigning. But I think this idea of no no one's persuaded by a march is a bit of a red herring because no one's really claiming that. What they're claiming is that people go to a march, go to a rally, and then are enthused to take their campaigning beyond that and try to persuade people, you know, whether it's their own family or further afield, they want to persuade them uh, that this is what they should be supporting and then try to obviously take that into the election campaign. You as mentioned well. the pathway to independence there. Mm. A lot of people might say that the Scottish government's strategy on that still isn't clear though, even mm. at this stage. Well, I mean, they haven't said Said that they agree with the Believe in Scotland route map, which is based on uh, the, the notion of a, a majority of seats and the majority of votes uh, implying different things. It is all still dependent, obviously, on how the UK government responds. But I think people thought that was a bit of a fresh approach because this question of votes versus seats has been a wee bit tricky over the last few months. And Alan, what do you make of the Scottish government's strategy on, on getting to independence? I think it's a little bit confused. I'm not entirely sure clear of their of their route map, but in fairness to them, um, it, it is a difficult um, path to, to, to forge. Um, I, I realistically, I don't think a referendum is in, on the horizon uh, at all, regardless of the outcome of the next uh, general election. I don't think that's where people's priorities are right now. So I think the, the SNP would be best spent you know, trying to build that support for independence amongst the undecideds, um, rather than focusing on the UK government, it's actually the people of Scotland they need to speak to more. And is there a path to independence then, Alan? If the, if the UK government continues to say no to another referendum, is there a pathway? There, I mean, it's not an easy one, uh, certainly not any time soon, but yeah, of course there is a path. You know, and any government would listen to, you know, um, if, if there were polls showing, you know, huge support for independence, you know, consistently over 6% you know, for a year, for example, and no UK government could, could ignore that. Um, so, so the SNP and the Greens and the wider independence movement need to start persuading those undecideds in Scotland rather than just focusing on uh, the UK government, uh, which, whichever party that uh, is. And Shona, do you think independence can be achieved without that referendum? Do you think that's still even a, an option at this stage? I mean, who knows what's possible? Who knows what international routes might be taken if, as Alan says, you know, that it can be demonstrated. I think the difficulty is getting people excited to campaign if they don't see the route. So we're in a bit of a catch-22. If you think, well, what's the point in campaigning for independence? We can't see the path. Then there's no point making the case. So the two things are definitely linked. And some people are already saying, you know, forget this general election route. Let's go to the UN and let's go um, above and sort of shame the UK government into action that way. And back to the rally on Saturday then, I mean, what, what kind of numbers are expected to, to turn up at the weekend? I mean, this is always a very tricky thing to guess, isn't it? Um, 
I don't want to get it completely wrong. I think I've seen a Does suggestion of 15,000. I, mean, I mean, probably not. You know, people will, will inflate or deflate or say this is a, a, a great success or an embarrassing show of lack of support. I, I don't particularly go, oh, how many people? Let, let's find out, you know, the morning after a rally um, because I don't think that tells you that much. I think there will be a lot of young people um, at this rally. It's being hosted by young people. There are obviously a lot of people all over the country who might not be able to attend Edinburgh, older people who might not be able to march. So I don't think we can read too much into that, Rona. Very briefly, Alan, do you think numbers matter when it comes to this rally on Saturday? Maybe in terms of the media, media narrative, I think it'll be a very large number and I think it'll be a very positive event. But just imagine if all those thousands of people were instead knocking on doors in the Rutherglen by-election instead. I think that could have more an impact. OK, we'll have to leave it there. Alan Roden, Shona Craven, thank you both for your time tonight on Scotland Tonight. Thank you.